so in this video we will be seeing how to reverse an array without taking the help of second array so in one array we are going to reverse these elements so we have the array elements 12 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and we are going to reverse these elements so upon reversing you will get uh, 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 12 so the algorithm we are going to uh, or the idea behind this is we are going to maintain two uh, indexes so the first one is index one and second one is index two so the first index will point to the first element and the index two will point to the last element so we can make this ecx register as the index two so uh, in the first uh, uh, iteration we are going to exchange these elements so 12 and 2 we are going to exchange these so 2 will come here and 12 will go here and we are going to increment this uh, index 1 value to here now we will be pointing to this side and index 2 will be decrementing by 1 so this will be pointing to this 3 and we are going to do the exchange again 8 and 3 so 3 comes here and 8 goes here again we are incrementing i1 i1 here and i2 here and we are going to exchange these two uh, elements these two again i1 here i2 here and we are going to exchange these two so the array reverse has been completed and now we need to stop this uh, loop so how to detect the loop is whenever the i1 is greater than or equal to i2 so that means uh, if i1 cross if i1 cross this half and i2 came here then that means i1 is greater than i2 so this condition satisfies and if there is another one element and these i1 and i2 will uh, come coincident at this one so e even if i1 is equal to i2 then that means you no need to swap out this element to itself so the condition the loop will break so this is the uh, uh, idea we are going to uh, let's declare an array size of d word and for simplicity purposes we will just declare an 1 2 3 4 5 and array 1 length dollar minus array one so dollar is current cursor position which will be at this fifth after fifth and if you subtract this array one which points to this one the base address and if you subtract these two values you will get the exact size of all of these elements and if you divide the total size by the four you will get the number of elements present in this array so instead of 4 we can say type array 1 so the type of this array 1 will automatically be placed here and we also say uh, declare index 1 and index 2 and now let's move on the length into the ecx register and then let's move uh, here the offset of this array one so we'll be using the esi uh, to point to this one so the esi is here and say offset array one so the base address is stored in the esi register now let's say a uh, loop one and in in this we are going to uh, put the first element that is this one one into the uh, ex register
and before that we need to calculate uh, this uh, element address so this is the index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so each element occupies 4 bytes so if you want to uh, access the last element you need to multiply the index value with the size of this element that is 7 into 4 that is 28 so uh, we should also decrement uh, ECX so this will point to the last element now we need to uh, ex comma ecx so this will give you the last from last index and move ebx comma the size of uh, array 1 and we are going to multiply with EAX so this gives you the offset from the base address so multiply with data size and we are going to move this into the index 2 So now let's go ahead and do the exchange. So the EX points to this one uh, because uh, we have copied uh, the ESI, the base address value that is uh, 12 into this EX register. And the ECX points to this one too and we need to do the exchange. So let's, uh, let's copy the uh, index 2 value into EDX register and then we are going to do the exchange exchange ex comma now we are going to access the uh, last element so we already have this uh, edx that stores the index to offset from the base address and esi plus edx so this gives the uh, last element access that is 2 and we are going to do the exchange uh, now EAX points to uh, 2 and this 12 will be stored in the last one so in our case uh, it's just one so let's forget about this array we are, uh, let's concentrate on this and now we are going to copy this 2 value into this first uh, address so the 2 will be stored here so to do that we can say move uh, esi comma ex so now the exchange has been completed now we need to increment this esi and also index 1 so let's add uh, esi comma type array 1 so we are adding 4 uh, bytes so that esi will increment to the next index and next index and so on and let's also uh, we have the index 1 pointing to 0 let's also increment that to uh, index 1 so the index 1 will go on point uh, incrementing up to the uh, this uh, condition if the index 1 is greater than or equal to index 2 so here uh, our index 2 is ecx remember this index 2 contains the offset from the base address if the ecx is 5 then the index 2 stores the 5 into the data size which is 5 into 4 20 so that you can access the element from the uh, base address that is array 1 since we are incrementing the esi this value will be modified and to access from the base address we can just specify array 1 plus edx now we need to compare index 1 and this uh, ecx and jump if greater than or equal to so index 1 is greater than or equal to ecx then that means all of the exchanges have been completed and we are at the middle position so at this point we don't need to interchange uh, we can just uh, exit out of this loop and loop l1 
so let's put a breakpoint at this and let's run this and ex now contains the starting value that is 1 so let's step into and here you can see ex value 1 and index 2 value should be 0 1 2 3 4 should be 4 into 4 16 so let's step into this edx 16 and ex uh, the last element 5 should be in ex here you can see ex 5 and then moving this one uh, into ESI the starting element so the first element has been uh, exchanged to this last element and now EX contains the last element value before exchange and that should be copied into the first element so if I go and step onto this and here you can see the 5 and 1 has been exchanged uh, here so it will be 5 and last element is 1 now we are adding the ESI index uh, the size of this array 1 array 1 element and then we are continuing this loop so what I can do is uh, I can put a breakpoint here and let's say continue oh sorry uh, So here you can see 5 and 1. So let's continue and here you can see uh, 4 and 2. Now you can see uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's continue. Okay, we are just uh, replacing this 3 with itself, I guess. Now we are comparing index 1 and ECX. So the index 1 index one value is 3 and ECX value is 2. Since it's greater than the ECX, we are going to exit now. Now here we can see we are directly exiting. Let's put uh, let's put the breakpoint at this and let's continue let's run this now we should see array 1 the 5 4 3 2 1 i can also add another integer 6 and let's restart this one array 1 now i should see 6 5 4 3 2 1 and this 6 is the length of uh, number of elements in this array now I can just simply change this uh, to some string let's say byte hello world now I can just ok now what we are going to do is uh, byte pointer we need to add this one just uh, let's say AL and also change this to AL so we need to do these modifications because of this uh, byte AL so let's go and run this one array 1 and here we can see the hello world in the reverse order so except these uh, changes you know need to change any of this uh, data size because here the uh, both memory operand size should be equal 
so that's all for this video reversing an array whether it's integer or character array using this technique without having to use another array